Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and welcome to this quick tutorial on using the Reorient module inside Mocha VR. Now, today's footage is brought to you via Jollygood, who created this neat little Samsung Gear 360 rig that provides kind of a selfie-style shot that keeps the user's hands free. Now, this kind of rig is great because it gives you this nice kind of self-journalism kind of look, but when the user tilts their body, such as our skateboarder here kicking off the ground, you can see that it tilts and wobbles the horizon quite a lot, which can cause motion sickness and disorientation. Now, so while we want to keep this kind of overall skateboard action going, we also don't want our VR headset wearer to kind of be ruining the carpet. So this is where the Mocha VR's rear module is going to come in handy. We can stabilize this horizon, so we keep all that nice action, but then we can also control the amount of motion that's retained. So we're going to work inside After Effects today. You can see I've got the Mocha VR plugin already applied, but obviously you can work inside Premiere or Avid or Nucor Fusion and the other OFX hosts, and of course, our standalone. So I'm going to get started by clicking on the large friendly button of Mocha up here, and this is going to load up the Mocha VR interface. So first up, you can see that we are currently in the echo rectangular view, and we can obviously view through our 360 button up here by clicking on the 360. And now we can go ahead and pan around that view by looking at what the shot looks like. So we're going to start by just playing this back, and you can see the erratic nature of this shot when I press play. You can see that he's looking around to begin with, and then he's going to start kicking off, and you can still already see that the horizon is tilting and moving around all over the place, and it's quite disorientating. So this is the thing that we need to fix, and if we look back in our echo rectangular mode, we can already see that there's a fairly large curve going to this horizon, which is causing that destabilization. So what we're going to do is first we're going to track, and you can see I've already tracked here. I'm just going to show you how I track this shot. We're not going to go through the tracking process, but what we want to show is where you should track and what you should be aiming for. So in this particular shot, what I've tried to do is get as close to the horizon as possible. Now, we've got a good horizon here, so it's going to be easy to find. So I've just found a nice bit of texture in these clouds here, which the planner tracker will lock onto really easily. But we could also have used maybe the beach on the front here, because there's some good planar detail here. Or we could have taken our chances on sort of the mountain crossover area between the sea and and the land, but I've chosen this just because it's a nice lockable area through the whole shot. If I go ahead and scrub, let's just turn on our surface and our grid to see that track, and we'll scrub through the timeline, and we can see here how that's catching all that motion. Now, there are plenty of tutorials on how to track and how to roto and all those kind of things, so we're not going to go through that tracking process, but you can see here that that's tracked pretty solidly, and we're using our standard 90% pixels and tracking in perspective to capture all that. So the key takeaway here is that you want to try and track as close to the horizon as possible. It doesn't have to be on the horizon, it just helps to be as close as possible. Oh, and you could even probably get away with using these trees, but the distant horizon is what we're aiming for. So once we have our track, we can then move over to the reorient module. So this is this feature here inside Mocha VR. So this is only in Mocha VR. You won't have this inside Mocha Pro. So let's go over to reorient. And we're provided with this red horizon line that's going through the shot. And this is turned on by this default checkbox called View Horizon. And this is a very important concept to understand. When View Horizon is on, we're not going to be previewing the render of the reorient. So we need to turn off View Horizon to see what the result is. Now, at the moment, there's not going to be a result, because if I turn it off, you'll see that nothing happens, because we first need to align this horizon with the current horizon sitting in our view. Now, you can do this horizon alignment in a number of ways. You can choose to do it inside the echo rectangular mode, or you can choose to do it in the 360 mode. And you can see here that my horizon line, if I pan around the shot, is moving with that pan. If I tilt up, it tilts up, and so on and so forth. So we could go ahead and adjust our tilt, our pan, and our roll in this view to make it fit where the angle of this horizon is. Or 
and this is my preference, we switch out of 360 mode and just view it in echo rectangular mode because when we start to adjust these you can see that it actually creates the curve that we need and I might find this a much easier way to modify the horizon than viewing it through this 360 mode but you know your preference is your preference so I'm just going to move the roll and the tilt around until I'm happy with this now what I'm doing here is I'm actually rolling around the parameters with my mouse but if you prefer a more sort of visual cue you can also turn on show control which brings up this little heads up display for controlling so this is just useful for helping you fit it a little bit more visually as we roll through this and get it to adjust so there's about the horizon so if i go back inside 360 you can now see that it's kind of sitting correctly on the horizon and we can do the same in this view here i can move it around i can move it up and down to fit the hilt tilt and I can also roll it around like this until I'm happy so we can just pan around this view and we can see now that horizon is more or less fitting correctly to the red line just like so now that we have the horizon aligned we just need to turn off view horizon I'm gonna first turn off show control and now when I turn off view horizon you're gonna immediately see an OpenGL preview of what the result will be so we can see now the horizon has been flattened. So if I turn that view horizon back on and I go to 360 mode and I turn it off again, you can see now the horizon is nice and straight. Now, just so you can understand the relationship between the view horizon and the preview that happens in the view, I'm gonna just quickly toggle between a few options here. So when I have view horizon on, you can see that this little preview button P up here is disabled. And this is by design. So this is called toggle module preview and this module preview is the OpenGL preview for say the insert module and the stabilize module and the rear end module so when this button is on it shows you what the render is going to look like in a preview but when we're in view horizon mode we actually disable this so that we can see the original source and not the preview render because if we don't see the original source we can't align the horizon correctly to the original footage so when we turn off view horizon you can see that now preview is re-enabled and if I turn it off it goes back to the original I turn it back on it switches back to the preview render so that's the relationship between preview and view horizon if I have view horizon on it disables the preview if I turn it off it re-enables the preview or just re-enables the state it was in so if preview is off it will stay off so that's just the relationship between those two it's kind of important to know that so you understand the why when you turn on view horizon you don't see the final render okay so let's go ahead and turn view horizon off so we can see the preview render and now we can see when we play back how we're getting a nice smooth horizon rather than erratic tilting all over the place so if we go ahead and turn preview off we can see how it's just swinging wildly all over the place and moving the horizon back and forth and if we turn preview back on we can see that we're getting a nice smooth view and the same goes for outside in equ rectangular mode so let's go out of 360 and we can turn off preview and see the original playback of that distorted horizon and the comparison between that and the flattened one which is this one here nice and smooth and easy to look at so what we're using here is maximum smoothing now maximum smoothing is essentially taking our tracking data and trying to use the maximum values possible to smooth out this horizon and this may not actually be what we want we may actually want to only get rid of a little bit of motion so that we're reducing the amount of motion sickness but we're also retaining the action so if I go into my 360 mode and we scrub through this we can see it's a little bit on rails it's a bit too smooth and it's probably better to actually reduce the amount of smoothing going on we can of course control how much is being smoothed in the tilt the pan and the roll so we can turn those off individually if we only care about the way the tilt and the roll is happening and we don't want to affect the pan so just by unchecking these boxes but here all I want to do is actually just reduce the overall smoothing going on so I'm going to go ahead over here and choose my uber key the reason I'm going to use my uber key is because I don't want to set any keyframes on my timeline to set this parameter so I'm going to turn on uber key turn off maximum smoothing and I'm going to adjust the number of frames that are being smoothed in my shot so I'm going to bring this down to about eight 
So now when I scrub through the shot, we can see we're actually getting a little bit more motion in the shot now. It's not too erratic like it was before, but it's still retaining some useful action within the skateboard shot. So if we look out in the 360 mode, so there's the original, and there's the smooth that one, but you can see that it's not as linear as it was before. When we play it back, you can see there's a little bit of roll on the horizon that's keeping that action nice and fresh. Now, one thing to mention is you really should be careful to turn off your Uber key after you're done. If you leave Uber key on, it means that any keyframe changes you want to do will not actually be retained and any changes you make will happen across the whole shot as well. So you want to make sure that Uber key is turned off and back on auto key. So finally, I just want to talk quickly about the Horizon Orient tools. These are kind of the more creative control tools that let you control where the camera view is sitting. So this is easier to see in 360. At the moment, if we look through our front camera, you can see that the view is actually looking behind our operator. And we want to actually look sort of the other way around. So when the user puts their headset on for the first time, they're actually seeing what our user sees. So the Horizon Orient tool helps us control this. We can control the tilt and the pan to actually move it around to what we want. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit and sit that there. And as I do this control, you can see out of 360 mode that I've actually adjusted him in the view. If I turn off preview mode for a sec, you can see he's sitting there in the original source. But when I turn it back on, my tilt and pan adjustment has moved him over and moved the horizon around again. If again, if we do it in the rectangular mode, you can see how that control is being affected. And obviously too, you can also control this with that heads up display like we did with the horizon align. We can move this up and down, we can move it side to side and so on and so forth. Just keep in mind that whenever you do this, you are actually creating keyframes. So you may want to decide between using an auto key or just use the Uber key to affect it once. So when we're happy with where the smoothing is at and where the control of the Horizon Orient is sitting, we can go ahead and then render it out. If you're in the standalone, you want to render that to the timeline and then go up to File and choose Export Rendered Clip and do it from there. But when you're working in the plugin, all you have to do is go ahead and close and save. And then inside the plugin interface from your host, you choose the reorient render from the module type inside module renders, and then you go ahead and check render. And then this will render inside the host view. Now, an important point for Mocha plugin renders, you don't actually have to render inside the Mocha GUI first. You can let the host do the work. Only the Mocha standalone application requires that you render inside the Mocha interface first before you export it out to a clip. The Mocha VR plugin will actually render directly to the timeline based on the project data. So there's no need to double up your work by rendering twice. So that's how we use the Reorient module in Mocha VR to help smooth out erratic horizons in 360 footage. We can see here if we turn off the effect for a second how erratic that footage was to begin with versus the smoothed out version that we used in the Reorient module plus the control of the Horizon Orient to make some creative decisions with the view. As always, if you have any questions, please do come and visit us either via imagineersystems.com or borisfx.com. This has been Mocha Product Manager, Martin Brennan. Thanks very much, and goodbye.